Hello everyone, Marcos Alonso here. Welcome to this video. Today we are going to see how to implement a non-isolated PI compensator using a TL431. This is another video in this series. Previously we have seen this video, LTS Spice number 26, how to create a TL431 model for LTS Spice first part and LTS Spice number 27 in which we saw the second part about how to create a model for LTS Spice of this device. So today in this video we are going to see how to use this device, the TL431, to implement a non-isolated PI compensator. Actually, this is not a very common application of the TL431, but I think that it is interesting to see this application before studying how to use the TL41 to implement an isolated PA compensator. So in this video we will see first the introduction, then we will show how to implement the PA compensator using the TL431. We will obtain the PI compensator frequency response and finally we will show several LTS spice simulations to verify the correct operation of the compensator. In this previous video, LTS spice number 26, we saw the equivalent circuit of the TL431 as shown here in this slide. So this is the equivalent circuit that we studied in this previous video. We have the operational amplifier, we have a bipolar transistor connected at the output and we have a reference voltage applied to the inverting input of the operational amplifier and this voltage is of 2.5 volts. So with this we can implement this equivalent circuit here and that we can analyze as we as we saw in the video and then we can see that this equivalent circuit behaves as an operational amplifier with this polarity for the inputs and having a gain that is given by this parameter gm times the resistance that we are going to connect here at the collector of the transistor and we studied that the value of Gm is the product of the gain of the operational amplifier times the transconductance of the bipolar transistor. We also saw in this previous video that we can use this arrangement and place um, impedance here between the output and the non-inverting input and another impedance here at the input. So with this we can implement an amplifier, a voltage amplifier. At the end, as we have seen in the previous slide, this is the equivalent circuit that we have. And we studied that when the gain, the total gain of the operational amplifier A prime is very high, then we can neglect the differential voltage and the output voltage is the typical expression minus the ratio of the impedances times the input voltage. Of course, if we want to have the full response of the circuit, then we have to consider the evolution, the, the change of the gain versus frequency that we have in the operational amplifier. But this is common in any implementation using an operational amplifier. So this arrangement that we are doing here to implement our voltage amplifier using the symbol corresponding to the TL431 will be represented as shown here. So the idea is that if we select the values of these impedances properly, then we can implement any compensator that we want to have for our converter. So let's see, for example, how to implement a PI compensator. We can see here the schematic to do the implementation. We only need to add this resistance and this series capacitance to implement the part corresponding 
into the impedance here at the feedback part of the structure and then we can use another resistance here R1 at the input. So with this we have the equivalent implementation of the PI compensator as shown here. We can use the capacitor C3 if we want to implement a PI compensator with an additional pole as we do when we want to implement it in the case of a regular compensator with an operational amplifier. We include this capacitor C3 here in parallel with these other two elements. So in this case we can do exactly the same. So these two circuits are then equivalent and this is the response in AC that we are going to have for our compensator. In this case, in order to simplify the analysis, we are not using capacitor C3, but it would be very easy to add this capacitor and obtain the frequency response of the PI compensator with an additional pole. Another important aspect is that we need, in the case of the TL431, we need to add here this additional resistance, RB, in order to adapt the DC levels that we are going to handle. So, because the TL431 is going to generate here a DC voltage as 2.5 volts, then we need to fulfill this condition for the DC level. So, the DC level of VI prime multiplied by this factor here, the gain of the voltage divider has to be equal to 2.5 volts. So this is the way to adjust the DC level at the output of our converter with the DC level that we have in the reference of the TL431. Here what we are doing is to have uh, the value of 2.5 volts is what we do in this other type of implementation. But then the DC level that we are injecting here has to have been corrected previously. So the DC level is 2.5 volts at the nominal operating point. We usually do this with a voltage divider at the output of the converter. So now we are going to do a simulation in order to compare the implementation of the PI compensator using the TL431, as we can see here, and the PI compensator implemented with a standard operational amplifier. We have selected here an operational amplifier, typically with this DC gain and a bandwidth of 1 MHz. We are including this gain here of minus 1, so in this way we are represented the transfer function of the compensator C of S without the negative sign that it's included in the feedback of the system. And here we have the implementation with the TL431. We are injecting the AC signal here using this voltage source. As we can see, we have the value of this resistance at the input. This is the value of the other resistance at the capacitance. These are the same values shown here. We have selected this other resistance here equal to this one. So the DC level that we are injecting here is 5 volts, which is equal to 2.5 volts at this point. And we also use here this minus 1 gain in order to have here at this output the corresponding function of the PI compensator without including the negative sign of the feedback. And here we have the responses of the compensator implemented with the TL431 in red. This is the phase and this is the gain. And this is in blue the response of the compensator implemented with the operational amplifier. So we can see that uh, we have a pole at the origin, then we have a zero at this point, so the response 
are very similar up to here and then the response corresponding to the TL431 is even better so the bandwidth is higher in the case of the TL431 and in the case of the operational amplifier the pole that we have here corresponding to the inherent pole of the operational amplifier appears at a lower frequency than in the case of the TL431. So let's see now how to use this compensator based on the TL431 in a real converter. For this we are going to use this converter, the MAC converter with current mode control that we have studied in these previous videos, power electronics number 50 and power electronics number 51. So in this converter we also used this current mode controller that we have studied in this previous video LTS spice number 25. What we are doing now is to use the internal operational amplifier in this controller as a voltage follower. So now the compensator is going to be implemented using the TL431. When we studied this converter in previous video, we selected here for the gain of our sensor a value k equal to 1. And with this value, the voltage that we require to inject here to define the peak value of the current through the inductor plus the compensating ramp was only 0 0.70 something, which in a normal application is good enough. But in the case of the TL431, we have to fulfill one condition, which is that the output voltage here at this point, which is going to be the compensator voltage, has to be higher than 2.5 volts. So we need to readjust the value of the gain here in order to increase the voltage that we require at this point to define the peak of the current. So what we have done here is to adjust this value, this gain of this current sensor equal to 5. So then the voltage that we require here is around 3.8 volts, which is higher than 2.5 volts. So this is one of the conditions that we have to fulfill when we use the TL431. The other condition is that the current that is being injected here into the cathode of the device has to be higher than 1 mA because otherwise the AC response of the TL431 is not good enough. So we need to have at least 1 mA into the cathode. We can do this by calculating the necessary value of this resistance here, R4. We know that here we are going to have something like 3.8 volts, so the difference is here at this level we have 10 volts, the difference is 6.2 volts, so we have selected here 1K, and therefore the current that we are injecting here is 6.2 mA, which is high enough, is greater than 1 mA, so it is a good design in this way. Note that the current going into the, this resistor here goes also into the cathode, the DC current, because we have here a capacitor here, so the current here, the DC current is zero, and also the current going here is going into the non-inverting input of the operational amplifier, so the current is negligible. And finally, the last condition is related to the ratio of these two resistances that we have here, because at this point, as we know, we are going to have 2.5 volts. So knowing the output voltage that we have here, the DC level at this point has to be 2.5 volts. In our case, the output voltage is 5 volts. So we have selected here this resistance equal to 16K. So it's the same as this one. And the voltage here, in the DC voltage, is going to be 2.5 volts. Finally, just a comment about the auxiliary ramp that we are using here in the controller because when we have here k equal to 1 and as we have seen in these videos 
the value of the amplitude of the auxiliary ramp that we require to have a stable operation is 2.5 times 10 to 4. But now we are increasing the gain 5 times, so we need to multiply also this auxiliary ramp, the amplitude of this auxiliary ramp, by the value of the gain, which is now 5. If you are not sure about this, please take a look at this video where we explain how to calculate the value of the auxiliary ramp to have a stable operation of the converter. And here we have the simulation results of the previous schematic. This is the output of voltage. Here we have the output of the compensator implemented with the TL431. And here we have the current through the inductor. So we can see how at the beginning the output voltage is reaching 5 volts. At this point here we have a step transient at the output, at the load. So then we have a decrease in the output voltage and then we have the, uh, the corresponding output voltage equal to 5 volts. So we can see how the output of the compensator is always higher than 2.5 volts as it must be. So here is around 3.8 volts and then here we need a higher value to compensate for the change in the load. And this is the current through the inductor, so we can see how the operation is stable. So we don't have perturbations on the current because we have adjusted correctly the amplitude of the auxiliary ramp. Here, for the sake of comparison, we have done a simulation of the converter, but now using the internal operational amplifier of the controller to implement here with this network to implement the MPI compensator that we have seen, which is almost equivalent to the compensator with the TL431. And here we can see the corresponding signals, the output voltage, the compensator output now here at this point, and the current through the inductor. So we can see that the response is very similar to that of the compensator implemented with the TL431. Finally, just very quickly to see how to obtain other values of the output voltage. Imagine that we want here at the output a value of 6 volts instead of 5 volts. So what we have to do is to adjust the voltage divider that we have here. So we keep the same value of this resistance because this resistance together with this other network here, the value of this resistance and the value of this capacitance are going to define the AC behavior of the compensator and then we change the value of this resistance here. So remember that we need to have at this point here the reference point of the TL431, a value of 2.5 volts. And here at this point we are going to have now 6 volts. So the necessary value, if we do the math, is 11.43 kilo ohms here for this resistance. So if we run the simulation, then we will obtain these results. This is the output voltage. Now we are reaching 6 volts. Here we have the step transient and then we are getting again 6 volts at the output. This is the output of the compensator. Now the output at this part here is greater and also then we need a greater value for the new value of the load. And this is the current through the inductor, so we can see that everything is working fine. Well, this concludes this presentation today. I hope that you find this video useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.